All right, here we go. Let's get into the questions, everybody. Um, being vote shamed. All right, before I read this, if you don't tell people who you're voting for, there's no way to be shamed. All right, I, I want to start a movement where somebody asks you who you're voting for. You, you should say, you should just tell them that that's rude. I don't answer rude questions like that. How dare you? How about you just go, how dare you? How dare you? What, are you taking a fucking survey? All right. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, I am. Oh, really? Is my vote in your little circle of the fucking world going to make you have a good prediction of who's going to win or lose? Shut the fuck up. All right. Being vote shamed. Dear Billy, the wise, wise ass. Uh, this, <laughs> this is the first delay. I like that. If I was a wrestler, that's, that's what I would, if I was a manager, Billy, the wise, wise ass. Uh, this is the first election I'm able to vote in. Congratulations. I'm 20 years old and I've been listening to you since I was 13. Oh, Jesus. Uh, I would load your podcast onto an iPod and listen on the bus to school. I really appreciate you not regurgitating everything I heard elsewhere in my life. You're a renaissance man, whether you like it or not. Uh, I got these young kids fooled. Uh, uh, you know, I appreciate that. You know, you live a little more life and be like, nah, this is just sort of the loud guy at a bar. Um, I read a lot and listen to non-mainstream media. That's great. I re. I think he meant to say I recently. I I read. I don't know. It says I I've R E A, and I don't know what it says after that. I'm just gonna continue. I've made my own judgment about how debilitating the establishment is toward our country. The news does not tell us what is really going on with our country's finances and foreign affairs. This cycle has been going on for decades, and I don't want to be a part of it. I'm voting for a third-party candidate whose principles I agree with. My friends are telling me that I'm wasting my vote, and I can, af can afford to do it because I'm privileged, which is why I have the audacity to do something like that. Um, oh, because they're not white, and they need you to vote the way they want you to vote. All right. Aside from that stuff there, I, I don't think voting for a third-party person that you believe in that is actually an honest person and will hopefully stand up to the banks and the oil companies um, without getting whacked. I don't think that is ever a waste. And I always believe that you're encouraging more people like that to run for office. Um, as far as what your friends are saying, it sounds like they're not white. If they're saying that stuff, I got to be honest, it's, it's the, uh, the guy who's in office right now is making them feel that way, which is what blows my mind about some friends that I have that are voting for Trump. And they're like, I, I, I just don't show me an example of how he's racist is like how they look at it. And it's just like, well, do you have any black friends? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell. What speeches are you watching? Um. I can just tell you this. My biggest advice that I would give you is just don't tell people who you're voting for. And, you know, if your heart's in the right place and you're voting for what you want to vote for, then there's nothing wrong with whoever, with whoever you're voting for. OK, straight across the board, Democrat, Republic, Libertarian, third party, whatever the fuck you call it. I don't just. Somewhere along the line, people just started saying who the fuck they were voting for. Liberals, celebrities, um, <clears throat> you know, I don't know. Let me just continue reading this. Uh, my mother lost her business was and I was in middle school and we had to live with my uncle when the economy crashed and she lost everything. It wasn't her fault. Her landlord went bankrupt and the bank sold the building to an investment group that used a loophole to condemn the building, put her out of business to end her lease and then rented it out at twice the price the following year. Those fucking people are brutal. This has informed a lot of my views and I don't apologize for it despite being told I should. It's really unfair to be talked to like this, especially when the people telling me this have no understanding of things beyond what they read in the headlines on Twitter. I know you voted third party in the past. Has anyone in your family or colleagues ever tried to make you feel guilty for your beliefs? Oh, absolutely. I've always been told that I've been, you know, throwing away my vote and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, you are privileged if you're white. It's just a fact. You just are. And just let, I'm just going to tell you my point of view on this. Like people misconstrue what that means. 
It's like, oh, you know, we lost the house. We were broke. We went through this. We went through that. My dad died. That's like not what that's about. It means you can drive down the street and not have to worry that you're going to get pulled over because of the color of your skin and maybe lose your life. It's like that story I told you when my brother-in-law was driving across country and I was talking to him like he was a white guy going, you got to do Route 66 and check out the fucking, you know, the arch in St. Louis. And my wife ripped the phone out of my hand and had literally fear in her voice. And all my brother-in-law was going to do was drive across the country. And she was like, was saying, only drive on the highways, only drive during the day, drive the speed limit, because she was worried that he was going to get killed just driving across the country. So that's what they mean. I used to think privilege. I mean, what are you talking about? I didn't know. I fucking paid for 90% of my college. I, I fucking worked my way through college. I got in this business. I didn't know anybody. That's not what they're saying. It's, it's how you move through the world um, is what it is. It's not your, your, how much money you had or if you went to a private school or not. It just means that you don't have to basically worry that you're going to get killed by your own, your fellow countryman just for fucking how you look. That's what it means. All right, there you go. <clears throat> and I believe to fund the police doesn't mean don't fucking pay them or get rid of them. As far as I understand it, somebody please give a clear de uh, definition. What I understand of it is we got to stop dumping all the mistakes of society onto cops and have them deal with the shit every day. Like, why are cops dealing with mentally ill people? They should be in institutions getting cared for instead of having the cops have to deal with that on top of all the other shit they have to fucking deal with. So I think that that's what it meant. And for whatever stupid fucking reason, they said called it defunding, which sounds to me like, hey, pay them less or don't pay them, which is insane. Um Almost as insane as me tackling these huge topics here. All right. Policy doesn't create <clears throat> opposition. Opposition creates policy. What the fuck? Got to read this 12 times. Policy doesn't create opposition. Opposition create policies. Okay. I got to take a sip of throat coat tea here before I read this one. I could read that a thousand fucking times and I would never know what it means. Um, hello, Bill. I am an admirer of yours, and I think you put in a positive contribution to U.S. pop culture. Um, all right. That was the most condescending first line ever. I think you put in a positive contribution to U.S. pop culture. Oh, do you? Is that what you think? I don't. <laughs> I just think I'm an idiot that a certain segment listens to for whatever reason. Uh, I think my subject lines up with your philosophy in quotes or at least it doesn't contradict it. I don't even know what you're doing. You're, you're beyond me mentally. I don't know what that means. Policy doesn't create opposition. Opposition creates policy. <clears throat> this is like chicken or the egg. So if you pose some, oppose something, they create a policy to make it to outlaw opposing it. Is that what you're saying? I don't know. Can you expand on the idea that people don't really have genuine political opinions, but rather have an innate propensity to get into arguments, and that this is really what 99% of political debate in the U.S. and everywhere else and at every other time has been? Like, if my parents are liberals, I'm likely to be a conservative just to piss them off and vice versa. And if I'm not, what kind of a pussy am I? You know what I mean? No, because if you had parents that you liked... I think if your parents are assholes. You just you, you do stuff like that. Anyway, people are way less rational and way more emotional and confrontation, confrontational just for the hell of it. Right. Uh, I don't know. You're speaking vaguely or above my fucking brain. I don't know what you're saying here. Um, I will say that, you know, most discourse, is that the right word? It's just become people screaming at each other, which I've done a couple of my relatives about politics. And, and, and I said like 12 times during it, we're not going to change each other's. This is such a fucking waste of time and you still do it. Um, I don't know. No matter what happens tomorrow, I, I just gonna, I don't know if I can have half the vibe 
that Travis Roy had when I met him that one time. I think I, I, you, you can really make the world a better place despite if you don't like the person that's currently your, your leader. You know what I mean? I actually saw something fucking amazing today. I was watching. I turned on the TV and a preacher was on. And he was really good. And I was listening to him. And he was saying the sum of your life and the impact that you have comes right down to basically the choices you make. And if you make positive choices, loving choices, that's the impact you're going to have on the world. And I was like, oh, my God, I love this guy. I found a church. And then he goes, and when you accept Jesus Christ, I'm like, why do they always have to do that? Why can't they just stop right there before they introduce their guy that separates everybody? If you just accept this, if you just every every religion has a fucking guy or a lady, maybe they, I don't know, maybe they don't have a lady. And then it just 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 stop right there. Because do I do I need to know the guy? If I did everything that the that you just fucking told me to do right before the Jesus Christ shit, even if I didn't, wasn't aware of Jesus, if the guy existed and, and, and is really the son of God and I'm going to fucking meet the guy. I mean, if I don't know who the fuck he is, but I lived a great life and I spread love and positivity and I helped people out and had a positive effect, I'm still getting in the club, right? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I was literally watching the TV going like, holy shit. I finally found my 700 club guy that I can, I can get into this. And when you accept Christ, it's just like, yeah, I don't need that. I just need the first part. Now you're having me choose teams. In every religion, people say what that guy says. And then it gets to that fork in the fucking road. And then it's uh, Yahweh, Allah, God, Buddha. And, it just, and then that just, it, somehow it, it divides people. What a surprise, right? What a surprise. People just start arguing and then they fucking kill each other. Just, I don't know. We're morons. All right. Advice. Changing people around me. Hi, Bill. Big fan of you and your show. I've spent much of my COVID time listening and reopening my eyes to the manipulative rhetoric being spewed about men that I unfortunately have contributed at least during my early adult years. As a result, I notice a lot of women my boyfriend is surrounded by whether it's because they are friends or girlfriends of his treat men and their men like garbage. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. Is this actually a woman writing this? This feels almost like I wrote it <laughs> because of this. I don't feel comfortable being around them because when I try to stick up for their guys, when they do nice things, they laugh at me and then put me down. It sounds to me like you're hanging out with assholes. My question for you is, how do I open the eyes of the women around me to the negativity they are exhibiting towards their significant others without stepping over the line? You can't. You can't. And you're smart enough to at least ask the question before you try to do it. Just don't do it. Don't do it. And hopefully those guys will be smart enough to try to find a woman like yourself if the way you're presenting yourself is true. Uh, she goes on to say, I don't like seeing these women complain and pick on their men when they do everything for their women, including cooking, cleaning, fixing things. Uh, I think in their eyes, I must come across as very traditional, but I think treating your significant other the same way you want to be treated, if not better, is a sign of your upbringing and what kind of person you want to be in this world. I 100% agree. Every man I have had in my life has made me the person I am today, so why would I want to stunt the growth and progress of people around me by exerting my insecurities and taking it out on them. All right, this, this is written by a unicorn, male or female, the enlightenment of this. Um, I don't know how to bring this up to my boyfriend either because I don't want to disrespect him by pointing out that the women he surrounds himself with are not good examples of what a woman should be. Wait, so your boyfriend's hanging out with all these other broads? What, are they nagging him? They're nagging their... Wait a minute. Are you, are you just talking about... The girlfriends of all of his friends? Are you competing with them? What's going on? Now I don't know what's going on. My theory as to why they act like they do, they, they act, wait, 
My theory as to why they act like this may have to do with the fact that many of the fem- of his female friends are really unhappy in their lives, either because they can't bear children or in, are in unfulfilling relationships and careers. Uh, this is starting to come off as, I don't know. How do I show them that inner peace and love for all is how you live a full and happy life? Many thanks, wise fellow ginger sage. Um, all right. If you're the nice person you're presenting rather than someone who's just being petty and competitive with the girlfriends of your boyfriend's friends, um, you just keep your mouth shut. Okay. It's, it's, this is not a problem for you to solve. It's none of your business and just stay out of it. Or you can create a giant shit show by getting in the middle of it. You know, there's no fucking way. There's, there's no way. There's no way to do that. All right. So, uh, I don't know if you're hanging out with them and they're fucking bitching about their boyfriends. I mean, why do you have to hang out with them anyway? Why, why the fuck do you hang out with, go get your, go get some people who look at life the way you do and hang out with them rather than hanging out with these fixer uppers that you can't fix up because they think the way they're living is right. Um, does that make sense? I don't know. All right. We have a new category here in the Monday Monday podcast of uh, people who work with the general public. We have uh, a top five dumb questions. Top five dumb questions people have asked you, whether you work at one of the few blockbuster videos left. Or if, you know, I don't know, you, you work at a fucking Starbucks. All right. So t- here this person wrote in top five dumb questions. School volunteer. Hey, Bill, I'm a female. I love when the ladies write in. I'm a female college student that volunteers at local schools in my free time. And let me tell you, teens are dumb as shit. (laughs) I was grading tests for a health class. A question asked students to define unsafe sex. And one kid wrote sex during a hurricane. Now, that has to be the class clown. Nobody could be that dumb and that funny and not, uh, not, you know. And that can't be on. That has to be on purpose. All right. We had a tornado drill at the school in which the regular procedure is to have students get into a windowless secure room. One teacher mistook the alarm for a fire drill and brought the students outside. Oh, boy. Uh, There's one girl with hippy dippy parents that always want me to admit. The earth is flat. One day she tried to disprove axial rotation, axial rotation by saying, if time zones were real, California would have warned Hawaii about Pearl Harbor. What the fuck? Wow, dude. It's that that well, that's a That is so dumb. I got dumber reading that. Going like, "No, wait, you're going the wrong way." And then I was like, "No, they are going the right way because they would be ahead of time." That is so fucked up. So Pearl Harbor would be on the news in California before it happened in Hawaii. So then they could say, hey, man, we're three hours in the future. So we just to give you a heads up, the Japanese are coming. Wow. That one takes the cake so far. Uh, Hippy dippy flat earth girl also once said to me. If we can really go to space, how come astronauts have never been to Earth? I don't even know what that means. Uh, I was moderating a debate on gender norms between a dillweed and a stoner. I don't know what a dillweed is. A dillweed asked, how come only men have to take paternity tests? No one asks a mother to prove that a baby is hers. Jesus. All right. Um, FYI, most of these kids are really sweet and will probably do great things someday, except for a hippy dippy flat earth girl. I predict she'll drop out within a few years. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Wow. All right, here we go. Top five dumb questions. We got a pilot. Nice. I'm a 24 year old pilot for a commercial airline. Look at this person crushing life. They used to fly corporate. And I wanted to share my top five dumbass, dumbest questions from the general public slash celebrity community. Uh, are you sure you guys can handle the wind? 
At the time, I'm 21, still baby-faced and supposed to be flying this 40-year-old typical hard-headed mass hole from Boston to the vineyard just for dinner. He had his 85-year-old mother and his wife and his 9-year-old daughter. The winds were gusting to 40 knots and moderate to heavy turbulence forecasted. I warned him that I was, it was going to be unpleasant and maybe they should reschedule. He said to me, uh, you could be my son. Are you sure you can handle the wind? Okay, so he's saying you're young. And it's okay to have concerns about this. So far, it seems all right. I responded with, I'm not worried about my abilities. I just don't know if this is the kind of experience your daughter would want to experience. Oh, yeah, Jesus Christ. Why would you do that to your kid? Fast forward 30 minutes later. I've never been more excited to hear the sound of four people puking in my life. The other pilot and I looked at each other, and all we had to do was smile. Needless to say, they spent the night at the vineyard, and we left. <laughs> Can't you just fly above the wind? Similar situations to the one above. I thought, aren't they asking for smoother air? I don't know. Are you sure the weather isn't bad? <laughs> My brother says it's nice at his house in Danvers. The guy proceeds to show me a picture on his phone of blue sky that he, <laughs> he got sent from his brother. RVR was down to about 400 feet. What does that mean? I don't know RVR. Is that cloud cover? Jesus Christ. Wait a minute. I got to see. So I got to look this up. Aviation. RVR. Runway visual range was down to 400 feet. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> uh, where it's baggage claim. I look above my head and there's a big yellow sign that says baggage claim. Uh... Do you even fly the airplane? Uh, parentheses, I'm a first officer. Ah, uh, yeah, we take turns each leg. Really? I just thought you sat there in case the captain dies. <laughs> he writes, yikes. Dude, these are great. These are great. From your fellow New Englander and Irishman, I love the podcast and always listen on long sits between flights. Hope you get on a flight and the little ones can come up and nerd out up in the cockpit. P.S., Helicopters are way harder to fly than airplanes. As always, go fuck yourself. Um, that's amazing. Jesus Christ. Can't you just fly above the wind? All right. Top five dumb questions. 911 EMT. Okay. I like how we, the way these are set up, Andrew, how you got these basically, each job gets more and more intense. All right. Hello, Mr. Burb. Hello, Mr. Burr. Big fan, longtime podcast listener. Thank you. I know you are asking for the top five stupid questions, but I am sharing with you my top five stupid reasons why the public has called. Now, okay, that's okay. You can adjust it. You can improv here. Top five reasons the public has called 911 is an emergency. I've been an ambulance operator for close to three years and have my stories, but these are the top five. Number five, wife called 911. Because her husband was eating dog food. Gross, I know. He was apparently trying to tell her that her cooking was shit and he would rather eat dog food. <laughs> this wasn't a handful of kibble, neither. It was straight out of the can, wet dog food. Wow. Number four. Man called 911 because he was choking on food. All right, well, if he can talk, that means he's not choking. He can breathe, right? Well, you might think that that, that is an emergency call, but here is the twist. He was choking the day before and called 911 to have us explain to him why he was choking. He wanted us to take him to the emergency room so the doctor could explain to him the medical reason why he was choking on food. This was a 40-year-old man. What the fuck? Now, these, these are making me feel better about myself. Number three, a woman called 911 because her electricity went out five minutes ago. We advise her to call the electric company. <laughs> Number two. A woman called 911 because she wanted us two EMTs to force her two daughters to help her clean the house. These daughters look to be in their late 20s. In her defense, the house was very dirty. Wow. Number one. A man called 911 because his mom is too fat. When we arrived, he asked us to give 
his mother medication that will somehow magically melt her fat away forever. That's in quotes. These kinds of calls make for good stories, but takes us away from the public that actually needs us when seconds count. Anyway, big fan and congratulations on your beautiful family. Your friend on the boo-boo bus. That's great, the boo-boo bus. Um, all right, what do we got here? I got some... Uh, I got some reads here. Oh, I got a bunch of stuff. I got reads. I got top five, you know, your top five dumb questions. If you work with the public that people have asked you, then I always throw myself right on the fucking, I jump right on the grenade. I, there's always, I always mention this. I went to um, Joshua Tree and I asked the park ranger, where is the Joshua Tree? Which for those of you on the East Coast, like where I'm from, that's like being in New Hampshire and asking somebody, where is the elm tree? All right, other fans from Egypt. Oh, shit. I might have to do Comedy Cairo coming up. Hey, Billy, you bald-headed cunt. I love it. I love that there's somebody in Egypt that has a sense of humor like that. God bless you. I'm, 26 year, I'm a 26-year-old guy from Egypt. I heard on your latest, your last episode about the Egyptian architect that listened to 12 years of Monday morning podcasts in six months. I also graduated as an architect, and your podcast was like my friend, during my sleepless studying days. Who would have thought my dumbass podcast is helping architects over in Egypt? And I listened to you, and I got a dumb question for you. I got a touristy question for you as far as the pyramids go. So when you're, when you're an architect, you, you, you must study the pyramids. Is part of any of your, your uh, training, do you have to design a pyramid, or is that just the dumbest? Is that like you saying, hey, you're an American and you're in architect school. Do you have to design a fucking, I don't know what, a uh, a uh, goddamn, I don't know, McDonald's sign or some shit. I'm trying to think of something. What, what is Taurus? Do you have to design a Statue of Liberty? No, France did that. I don't fucking know. Um, and I listen to you now as I work as an interior designer. I just want to thank you for the laughs. No worry. He goes, I just want to teach you some Egyptian cuss words you can use. Uh, I hope I say this right. Cos uh, Omak, C O S space O M A K. Cos Omak. That means your mother's cunt. Uh, Eben Shamorta. Your mother is a whore or a slut. That's weird because Kos Omak and Eben Shamota, there's no, they both have mother in it. I don't see any similarity there. Um, seems like a difficult language. I don't know how to pronounce it. That's, that's one. Eben Shamota. Eben Shamota. E-B-N space S H. A-R-M-O-T-A. All right, that's good to know. I don't know which one of those I would use if I went over there. All right, your mother's a cunt. Um, I would say that if they dropped me off too far away. Uh, that's, that's the tough one, though. Does that, like, go fuck yourself over there? I have no idea. I'm just psyched people from Egypt are listening. Anwar Sadat, one of my favorite uh, world leaders when I was a kid. I saw him give a speech outside the White House during the Reagan years. All right, your stance on violence. Uh, dear Billy Bill. People in the com in comments section sometimes speak for you. Uh, according to them, you're both an alt-right misogynist and a lib as well as a liberal douche. That warms my heart. I love that. People in L.A. think I voted for Trump. People in fucking a red state think, uh, you know, I'm a Biden guy or whatever. Uh, this isn't new at all. I've seen people fuck up categorizing you for a while. Yeah, I'm, I'm part of the contrarian party. Uh, one argument that was interesting was whether or not you condone violence against Trump supporters. Well, I don't condone violence against anybody. Um, I voted for Joey, no pulse. <laughs> yeah, we'll say this about fucking Joe Biden. He's already getting some great nicknames. Forgetful Freddy, that was mine. Joey, no pulse. Uh, Bloodless Magoo. I mean, the guy's, he's the, he's like, I don't know. All right, let's just, let's just plow ahead here. Um, I voted for Joey No Pulse, but I'm also not going to sucker punch my uncle for voting for Trump. Uh, do you agree with this nonviolent stance for the commenters at home? Thanks and go fuck yourself. Um, I'm only getting half the story here and all of a sudden you're getting, do I agree? Do you, no, I don't condone attacking people for their political beliefs. I don't condone bringing politics up. When people are just at a party trying to have a good time, although I am guilty of doing that. Um, and it's always something I, I literally just overheard and didn't research. Um, 
But, you know, that is the Internet. The Internet is you can just say whatever you want and say people go on and, you know, they do reviews of my act and they say what I meant by jokes. They say why my jokes work. And I look at them and they're hilarious because none of it is right. None of it makes any fucking sense. And they're not comedians and they're just speaking. See, the reason why this joke works is because of X, Y, and Z. What he's saying with this joke is just like, you know, you, or you could just fucking ask me. I could give you definitively. Well, what, why, why do I need to ask him? I have all the answers. Um, all right. Future government. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is going to get this is going to get deep here. Future government, um, which, by the way, it actually rained out here. I was excited about that. Rained out here. It's getting cold um, for L.A. anyway. And um, that's a great thing. You know, we, I think we got by the fire month, I believe. I don't know. But I thought the Santa Ana winds were still coming. But maybe a little bit of rain will help people out. Um, I don't know. We shall see. Um, all right. But God bless anybody out there who's actually starting a company that's going to try to battle uh, global warming as opposed to ignoring it. Um, hey, you guys, send me in some companies that are into that shit if you guys have any. And I won't research it. And then I'll just read it as fact. Does that sound cool? All right. Future government, everybody. Dear Billy Doomsday, have you been following along with this build back better thing? No. Do I want to? It's a phrase that started showing up on the platforms of candidates around the world. A few basic Google searches and you can find where the money comes from. It's basically a collection of huge tech companies coming together with government agencies to transform society. All right. Into something better? I don't remember voting for this, nor have I seen much about this on the news. Well, they never let you vote for any of this shit. I'll probably help pay for it through though like the rest of us suckers they don't seem to be releasing much information just vague initiatives about how to spend money to make things better do you think they'll be taking suggestions from average joes like us on this better future does a guy who hates street level computing worry about stuff like this um thanks and keep plowing ahead um listen i know where i fit into shit and i I am not the guy that's going to solve problems. So there's just people that are a level of smart that I don't think an average person like myself can understand. And it's up to them to use their – my gift is I tell shit jokes. That is my gift. I come to town. I do my jokes. I jump up and down. and make an ass of myself. And you guys laugh and hopefully forget about your problems for an hour, right? That's my job. That's what I'm good at. There's super smart people that actually can probably help solve a lot of the problems that we have and um so i'm i'm hoping that that is going to be that they put that together i just i mean that that is an unholy matrimony right there huge tech companies which seem to own a lot of the social media i just feel uh, i don't know i don't know that seems like cameras i'm sure they're going to sell it like this will I will say if there is a uh, if there's a way to start cert- stop certain kinds of crimes if they just use it for that but you know they'll go beyond that you know if there's a way to stop like kidnappings and rapes and murders and people getting you know hurt and stuff like that if they can use technology for that and the environment I'm all for that but I don't know I yeah I I would definitely be nervous about where they're going with that but I don't know if you want to have more freedom, uh, make less people. You know, it's when you, you seven billion. We're going to go for eight billion. They're just going to put us in stockades at some point. I mean, well, how, how are you going to keep all those people? <laughs> you know, but back in the day when there was just a couple million people, you just fucking walk around. You didn't need an ID. You could do whatever the fuck you wanted to do. Um, all right. Sinkhole. That almost made sense. What I just said. All right. Sinkhole. Hey, Bill, did you hear about this guy? Man falls into pit filled with rats. After sinkhole opens on New York City sidewalk. Oh, my God. Did you ever worry about them when you were living in New York? You know what? I don't I don't um, walk on those subway grates and I don't uh, drive over. You know, when they're putting up a big building and they have those, you know, so they're, they got to put, you know, the sewage. Everyone's going to take a shit in that building. Where's it going to go? We got We got to put it where the dolphins are. So, um they always, you know, they got to do some work under the streets. So, you know, when they're in the process of building that stuff, connecting it up to the, the sewer line or whatever, they'll have a hole and then they'll have that giant metal grate 
that they put, I won't drive my car over that if I can avoid it. And if I, if I can't, then, um, you know, I do what I can. Oh my God. That hole is so small. What in the fuck? One man will have nightmare fuel to last him a lifetime after New York City sidewalk opened up beneath his feet, plunging him into an underground vault filled with rats. Dirty, furry, scrabbling, hungry rats. Oh, my God. That's like some Indiana Jones shit. Wait a second. You guys want to hear this? This is way more interesting than I'll ever be. Hold on a second. Let's get back to the beginning of this video. Oh, forget it. I thought they were talking to the guy. He was in stable condition. The horrifying incident happened on Saturday, October 24th, near a bus stop in the Bronx. Surveillance video shows Leonard, 33, was waiting at the stop when a sinkhole opened beneath him, dropping him 3.7 meters to 4. Okay, that's 12 to 15 feet down into a rat's lair. It's like he didn't break his legs on that fall. Um, in other news, two murder hornet queens captured in Washington State sting. What in the f That's really clever writing there. Uh, he went down feet first. His mother, Cindy White, told NBC he was just standing and the sidewalk just, it was like a suction, like a sinkhole. He just went down. Shoulders face, shoulders face scraped the concrete as he fell and he hurt his leg and arm on the way down, his brother told CBS New York. But that wasn't the worst of it. Shoulders found himself alone in the dark with the teeming horde of vermin, unable to escape or call for help. He ultimately spent 30 minutes in the chamber with the rats. Rats crawling on him. He can't move. He just, it was so bad, his brother said. He didn't want to yell because he was afraid there were going to be rats inside of his mouth. Oh, my God. Bystanders called for help, but it took some time for the firefighters to pull shoulders. Oh, he didn't scrape his shoulders. Shoulders is his name. <laughs> I thought he was saying he scraped his shoulders. His name is shoulders. Shoulders face scraped the concrete. I guess shoulders, shoulders were okay. One witness said he looked in the hole and the guy was only moving his hands. Video, which I will not watch, shows shoulders being carted away on a stretcher after the ordeal. He was taken to a hospital for treatment and was still there on Thursday. He's traumatized, his mother said. He said he went straight down and he was falling, falling, but the debris was falling and hitting him on the head. Shoulders told his mom the rats were so big and ridiculous underground. She added that anyone could have fallen where her son fell. The family is considering legal action in the wake of the incident. What were you going to sue, the rats that ate out all the shit below it? Um, New York's Department of Building says the underground chamber is a cellar next to the mostly empty five-story building. Officials ordered the building to be vacated after the incident, and they are looking into the cellar to see who owns it. The building owner was also, ah, there's the guy who's going to get it. The building owner was ordered to set up a fence around the hole and hired an engineer to inspect the stability of the vault underneath. The incident sparks fears among many citizens in New York where the city has long struggled to control its massive underground rat population. The city's rats started eating each other last spring as human litter dried up due to the coronavirus lockdown. Well, there you go. Orkin recently dubbed New York City the third most rat-infested city in America. Oh, no. After first place, Chicago, my kind of town, Chicago. Of course they are. You know they're eating good in Chicago. Fucking best steaks in the world. Uh, and second place, Los Angeles. Jesus Christ. I moved away from Massachusetts to the two most rat infested, the first and third most rat infested cities in America. That's what I did. Holy shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, what kind of shots do you give that guy? I'll tell you, if he survives that, the way his immune system is going to be, he could fucking, that guy could cure corona. Just walk up, grab it by its throat, and fucking stuff it back up a bat's ass, whatever you got to do to get rid of it. Um, all right. Plowing ahead here. All right. Top five dumb questions for employees. All right. This is the, uh, oh, my God. This is like blowing up here. We got medicine we got a nurse we got a park ranger and we got a funeral director oh boy dear bill the out of touch mob boss burr oh thank you for watching that was a sketch i did on snl which i still can't believe i got to do uh by the way did you see that first sketch last night dave did 
about Aunt Jemima, Uncle Ben, uh, the State Farm guy. And uh, I'm not going to say who came in last. It's fucking great. It was hilarious. And it definitely seemed like it had Dave's fingerprints all over it. I loved it. All right, dear. Okay. Thank you for all that you do with the podcast. It's absolutely hilarious. Thank you. And help me get through 48 hours of straight driving this year when driving across the country from Pennsylvania to Arizona and then back again. Uh, the advice you have given others has also helped me in my own personal life. So thank you. I recently listened to your segment about the lawyer and the top five dumbest questions he was ever asked. I thought it was awesome. And I thought you should have some, here's some of my stories and, and questions I've experienced working in the funeral industry in the last eight years. The top, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the top dumbest questions have been number one, have you ever considered having sex with a dead person? Definitely not considering most of them look like your grandmother. I get this question a lot. Maybe it is a fair question, but I think 99% of most people already know the answer to this question, and it's completely absurd. And also, if you were, you wouldn't fucking answer the question. Um, oh, my God. Jesus, I just visualized that. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Uh, you know what I was thinking of was was that that fucking movie Jacob's Ladder when that thing in the tub or is that from The Shining? Oh my God! Oh, Jesus Christ! All right, we loved our son. Can we bury him in our backyard so we can always be close to him? All right, that's a dumb question, but it's also a loving question. And back in the day, you could do that. We actually buried this guy in his backyard like some frontier trail of tears bullshit. I did not even know this was legal until I was asked this. And had to find out about it. I guess you can in that state. Not only did we bury him, but they did not like the vault we had ordered him and made us come back the next day and take him out of the hole to put in a sealed vault so he would not get wet. Um, oh, my God. These are crazy. All right. Brace yourself for this one. Number three. Can you cut off my wife's favorite tattoo on her left leg and can I keep it? Sorry, Jeffrey Dahmer. We can't do that for you. I know this is my grandmother's funeral, but can, I, but can I have your number? Hey, look at you getting a little action there. This one was rather recent. I am single and somewhat attractive male. Well, you got to be, dude. If you're getting her fucking all, her motor running in there. Dude, but I can tell you right now, that chick is a psycho. Or has a big heart and doesn't judge people. I don't know. But I, on the, gee, I, I think I covered all the bases there. That's like that jerk off that fucking plays roulette and hits all the numbers. And then jumps up and down like he won. Um... This one was rather recent. I'm a single and somewhat attractive male, but I am very professional, would never pick up women at work or at a funeral. Literally, this was a live episode of Funeral Crashers if it was a show. Uh, my condolences to your dead grandmother and family that you clearly don't give a fuck about, but I give her my number. But I did give her my number, needless to say. Oops. Yeah, what the fuck? Um, she's probably some freak that wants to fuck in a coffin. Watch, that'll be the third date. Um, this, <laughs> this one was a comment I received from a holy man from a Southwest Asian culture. Um, a holy man of his religion came up to me and said, I only have one prayer to say during today's service. I said, okay. Oh, okay, great. Not a problem. Uh, yes, it's three hours long. I was stunned and stared at him in silence only to find out he was serious. I have tons of other stories I would love to tell you. Um, if you find what I wrote interesting, I absolutely did. And I am sure myself as well as other funeral professionals have tons of craziness that they can write in and tell you about every troll in the public wants to be a funeral director and do my job until we are called out at three in the morning to remove a decomposed body in a shithole house. I don't think everybody wants to be a funeral director. I hope you and your family stay healthy and, and safe. That's so creepy to hear that. Oh, yeah. I don't want to see you buddy during this. Um, yeah, let me hear from the funeral directors. I want to hear some more stories of fucking weirdos. The funeral home. Um, Park Ranger. Hey there, Billy Bada Bing. Billy Bada Bing. Uh, I've been loving the top five stupid questions segment recently, and I figured I should chime in since I am a fellow mass hole turned National Park Ranger. Um, and as you may already know, we have heard it all. I work at the Grand Canyon, so you can imagine the types of people we come across with over 6 million visitors a year from all parts of the globe. This is by no means a definitive top five, but these are perhaps the most commonly heard idiotic questions here without further ado. All right, here we go. Number one, 
at least once a week after driving all the way out here. Uh, we're kind of out of the way, passing many signs to the, quote, Grand Canyon. Someone will pull over, pull up to the entrance and ask, what's in here? Or hold up a picture of the canyon on their phone and say, we're trying to find this. I have to bite my tongue not to ask them how the flying fuck they got all the way out here from God knows where without the confidence of knowing where exactly they were. Uh, number two, um, what time do you feed the bison? Or... When did the bison come out? I love that. Like they got a fucking two bedroom apartment. Uh, the North Rim has bison as if we're running a petting zoo instead of a national park. Uh, number three, people looking for the road that goes into the canyon so they can drive their car to the bottom and see the Colorado River. Uh, don't you think you'd see a picture or two if the road existed, sir? Um, <clears throat> number four, do I really have to pay to come in? This is this one is constant as people think, uh, insert Burr Southern accent here. Okay, I'll do my bad Southern accent. Uh, this here is my land. I pay taxes and I shouldn't have to pay no fucking fee to see public land. Uh, there are many issues with this sentiment and explaining them would only further anger these animals. Or people that come up and say they don't have money to pay and expect to be let in. As if you could sit down at a restaurant or any other business and use this as an excuse to enjoy their services for free. Oh, if you got your money, no worries. We anticipated you might do this. Follow me to your table, and I'll have the chef bring you out some appetizers. Um, all right, dude, you, you're fucking funny, man. You should give these... Well, don't give them shit. You'll lose your job. You did the right thing. Save your funny asides and send them in to me. All right, number five. If I hike to the bottom and can't hike out, you'll come and get me, right? People expect some sort of free helicopter ride or service out of the canyon if they decide to be stupid and hike themselves all the way to the river. The sad part is if that, that happened, they actually, get, they actually get it on the park's dime. Well, we don't need to know that. The sad, the, on the park's dime? Hopefully, well, that means the taxpayer's dime, right? I hope these were mildly entertaining, and I'd like to mention, so I don't get fired, that these views are my own and in no way represent the views or opinions of the park service. I love everything you do and send my best to the lovely Nia and the little birds. Come out to the canyon for a private tour anytime. Peace, love, and go fuck yourself. <laughs> I haven't been to the Grand Canyon in forever. I went there in like 94. All right. But I've flown over it a zillion fucking times. Which I feel that's... I would hike down to the bottom, though. And on the way out. I, I could do that. Oh, Jesus, Bill. All right. Now you can already hear the helicopter. All right. Nurse. Hey, Billy, ginger season tits. <laughs> Ginger seasoned tits. Uh, just in time for October, November. I'm a 27-year-old RN from Minnesota, registered nurse from Minnesota, who works for the last five years at, I'm not going to say where, where a majority of what we do is colonoscopies. Here are probably the top five questions I have had from some of these fucking, these fucked up patients. Number one, Is it bad? Oh, my God. I had to read this before I said it. Number one, is it bad that I've been cutting up Dove soap bars into small pieces and putting them in my butthole to keep the worms away? Number two, if I put my finger in my butthole and circle it around during showers, does it help prevent hemorrhoids? What in the fuck? People just say this. Number three. Uh, did you think my uterus looks sexy today? We didn't check that or close to that, LOL. Number four, does the butthole connect with my psyche? What does that even mean? Number five, did you see my butthole? Did you see my butthole? <laughs> what the fuck? Just a medley of what comes to mind, but I'm sure you can figure it's quite a variety pack of people rolling into this butthole clinic. Love you, the family, and your sense of humor. And your sense of humor is not like anything else by a long-ass shot. Take care. Uh, nurse so-and-so. A religious listening lady. What in the fuck? Did you see my butthole? Did you see my butthole? Wow. I didn't think anybody could top uh, where is the Joshua tree, but they seem to be doing it quite, quite easily here. Um, all right. Plowing ahead. Medicine. Hey, Billy Bleached Butthole. A lot of butthole shit this week. Uh, I work in medicine and thus have encountered some very uninformed individuals. As everyone needs medical care, idiots included. Now, I don't 
look down on these individuals as they lack medical knowledge, parentheses normal, and importantly, are anxious about their well-being in these situations. He settings, sorry, top five questions asked statements I've encountered in medicine. All right, number five, young male adult who comes in complaining of large amounts of bright red blood in their bowel movements. That's scary. I do a physical exam and I cannot find an obvious reason for this complaint. I order some tests to find out the cause and if it's actually blood in his poops. Guy is anxious and asks, it's normal to have some blood in your poop, right? Bear in mind, this gentleman said his toilet bowl was covered in red. I had to keep a straight face and tell him, no, it's not normal to poop blood. Well, that one's just scary. And he just wants you to say it's okay because he, so he doesn't feel like his insides are falling out. Number four, obese family doesn't know she is pregnant. Comes into ER because her stomach is acting up. I see on an ultrasound and blood work that she is pregnant. Quite far along too, but she refuses to believe us. How do you know I'm pregnant? Uh, I can see the baby on the ultrasound, man. <laughs> wow. Don't you just want to rescue that baby the second it comes out of that person? Oh, my God. Number three. Okay, public service announcement. Guys, if you're at the doctor's office for dick issues, just say that from the get-go. Don't come in and say, don't come in and at the end say, oh, one more thing, my dick. Also, get some damn priorities. If you got the health of a laboratory rat that has been purposely fed fat its entire life and your main concern is your dick, I got an issue with that. <laughs> so this guy asked if the Viagra I prescribed him for his erectile dysfunction would also help with his short dick. He whispers this last bit. I told him no. It will not add an extra inch or two and would only help him maintain an erection. Ah, poor bastard. Uh, number two, guy wants a prescription for ketamine. This is a powerful anesthetic. Explains that it is my moral imperative to do, to do this and that I will be leaving him no choice but to manufacture ketamine himself. He tells me the steps to make the drug and that he has read the Wikipedia page. I wish him good luck in his venture to manufacture the drug. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Opioid overdose. Oh, that's sad. Comes in via friend ambulance. So somebody drives him there. Pretty much blue, starts CPR on him and give him Narcan. Wakes up and stabilizes. Five to ten minutes after being conscious, he asks for some morphine. Nah, dude, you were dead like ten minutes ago because of that. Wow. That fucking opioid shit. My God. Thank Christ I never fucked with any of that. Um, all right. Big fan from Bahrain. Uh, hey there, Billy Blue Balls. This is a follow-up on the two fans who reached out to you from Egypt. I am crushing the Middle East right now. Woo! I am a 24-year-old guy from Bahrain, and I've been a fan of yours for over seven years. How the fuck do you know who I am? That's unbelievable. I'm about to graduate from college with a degree in English literature, and your podcast has made my journey a lot easier. Oh, God, I'm sure you know every English curse word. Listen to this thing. The two architects from Egypt said that they listened to you while studying. I couldn't do that because reading the incoherent ramblings of Shakespeare and Fitzgerald wouldn't let me focus on your poetic language. <laughs> I hate that shit. I hate Shakespeare. I respect Shakespeare, but I fucking hate it because I don't know what they're talking about, and it makes me feel dumb. So it has nothing to do with my fellow William here. I just, it's just, you know, I can't even read the fucking Constitution. Um, all the best to you. Forget about the Bible. This isn't the way people talk now. That's how dumb I am. All the best to you and your beautiful family. May you, maybe you can visit Bahrain once to watch an F1 race. I would love to do that. Listen, okay, this is what I need you guys to do over there. I need you to give me the over-under of me going over there and not getting kidnapped because of some shit that some oil companies from my country did. I'm going over there, a fucking white dude, right? Blue chip fucking hostage all right i know we didn't do something you gotta you gotta like uh you know what i mean you know you guys all look at america and you just think it's a bunch of people going yeehaw shooting a fucking gun in the air eating a fucking pie riding on a four-wheeler you know there's there's a there's a whole bunch of different shit going on over here so what I, please people from the middle east please keep writing in and telling me about uh Tell, talk to me about everyday life over there because we don't know anything about They don't fucking tell us anything over here. 
Um, all right. Love from Morocco. All right. Hey, Billy Crimson Balls Burr. Look at this shit. Look at I, I'm, this, you know what I'm doing right now. You know, I'm going to pat myself on the back. I am humanizing all of the world because look at them all breaking my balls just like you guys do here. In fact, some of the best ball breaking I ever got was when I went to India. And of course, Ireland and Scotland. But I knew that was coming. But all right. Anyway, hey, Billy Crimson Balls Burr. I heard how excited uh, you got when the two architects from Egypt wrote in, so I thought I'd chime in, but this time from a different Arab country, Morocco. I'm a 22-year-old computer scientist. Like, smart people from the Middle East like me. Although, Morocco, that's uh, that's Northern Africa, right? Is that what that is? Ah, oh, jeez, I used to know this shit. I was really into geography at one point in my life. And then I started drinking Morocco map. Is that near, like, Algeria or some shit? All right, here we go. Algeria. Uh, what the fuck? Uh, you know, can you just show me a p image? Just show me a picture of it. Oh, there it is, right next to Algeria. Crushed it. Oh, wait a minute. Now, does Morocco have... Uh, you played it for her? No, play it for me. Isn't that where that is? Wherever, wherever Humphrey Bogart was? Casablanca? I don't know. Anyway, well, at least I know where you are. I know where you are, uh, and I stopped myself before I said something really dumb there, like, hey, it's in the Middle East. No, it isn't, Bill. All right. Uh, all right. I heard about Morocco. I'm a 22-year-old computer science student from Morocco, and listening to your podcast helped me get through my, the day a lot easier. I'm often laughing my ass off listening to you rant about stupid shit while I'm nerding out in front of my computer. I uh, just wanted to ask you, since you've been traveling a lot in recent years, have you ever been to Morocco? I haven't. If so... What did you think of it? And if by a long shot you'd ever do a show in Morocco, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Thanks for all the laughs and go fuck yourself. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that we've been fucking with you guys, have we? <laughs> I mean, that's that's how I travel. You know, I, I gotta you got to look up, like, what in God's name did we do to you guys? All right. Um, would I do that? I mean, I can't do it during COVID, but yeah, fuck yeah. I've never been to Africa, never been to that continent, so... Uh, that's something I'd like to do. I really have no desire to go on a safari in South Africa because I feel like we've already taken over all of their land. They have this little patch left, and now we're going to be driving around watching them fucking eating each other in on Jeeps. It's like, why don't you just fucking leave them alone? Um, but having said that, um, you got to give it up to Africans, the, the level of fucking animals that they have in that on that continent and they survived is fucking unbelievable. You know what I mean? Like I sit there, I get freaked out. Like when I, I, if I go on like a hike, you know, there's places in LA where you can actually run into bears. So I, I, I'm not going, you know, there's like fucking mountain lions and shit. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm going to stay on a fucking elliptical. I'm going to walk around a block. But I saw this thing one time about a tribe in Africa, and they are so good at killing lions that the lions see them coming and they run away. And all they're coming out with is they got a fucking, you know, it was a spear and a, and a shield. And they walk right up to the fucking, the dude lion. And it's it's just over. They got like this thing. It's, it's weird. They look like riot police. They come up and... <laughs> He got the shields in front of him. And then some dude just fucking fires a spear, goes right into the line. The line's like, oh, shit, what the fuck? And, by, and then they all just, it's over. It's a quick fucking death. And, um, and, they're, going, and they're on foot, walking out on foot like, all right, you guys want to eat lion tonight? And they just go out and do it. It's, it's pretty badass. But anyways, I haven't said that. Like, I really like, um, you know, as much as I fucking eat cows and chickens and pigs, I've been trying to lay off the fish, um, unless it's some man-made shit. I'll eat a man-made salmon at this point. I'll roll the dice. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? And actually, in a lot of ways, it's probably more healthier than the than the uh, the other shit, the wild salmon, because, you know, what the how much we polluted the fucking oceans. I don't know. I can be honest with you guys. I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. But, like, you know, the big game shit. Just, just, I just wish that, like, there was a way to kind of give them some of it back. You know, lessen the populations around the world. Let the fish have the ocean again. I'm getting really fucking hippie here, but we, we really are just like, you know, what did Bill Hicks say a long time ago? We're a virus with shoes. We really are. Um, 
I remember Joe Rogan had this great blog that he wrote when he was flying over the country and he was looking at the cities and just saying we were like a fungus. <laughs> I don't think we're all bad, but like we should definitely, I don't know, try to reel it in a little bit. Um, I would absolutely do a show in Morocco. I hope we get to a point at some point where, you know, we get a cure for this shit and stuff opens up again. Why the hell not? It seems like a beautiful place. All right. Egyptian architect in Japan. All right. <clears throat> Dear Billy, no liquor. I know. I'm coming up on two years, everybody. November 24th. Two years. Um, I don't even think about it anymore. Although the other night I, wa I watched somebody. Oh, I watched this fucking unbelievable movie that my wife loved and I had never seen before. It was Matthew Broderick and Reese Witherspoon were in this movie. And it was about a teacher that gets fixated on this student and he's trying to stop her from achieving. It's um, I absolutely loved it. But anyways, one of the one of the actors in there playing a dad was sitting there, and he had a scotch or a bourbon, and he had it in a highball glass. And oh, it, it was that time of night when I used to drink them. And I was literally, uh, I was laying on the couch with my wife, and my head like like popped up. It's like oh, oh, I'd love one of those. But other than that, I don't really think about it. But every once in a while. You know, I started thinking about that dad, that character being like, I wonder if he can just have one. Just has that one. He sips on it, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, thank God I got kids. That's what I always think of. Anytime I get tempted, I go, do I really want to do this? No, I don't. All right. Um, Egyptian architect. Uh, Dear Billy, no liquor. I'm a 30-year-old Egyptian architect working and living in the great city of Tokyo. Um, another place I'd love to go. I heard on your previous episodes that there is at least two other architects listening to your podcast. And I got to say, your podcast helps us push through hard tasks and tight deadlines. Um, that is unbelievable. Why my podcast? Is it because it's so fucking stupid? Um, <laughs> gives your brain a break. Also, all of my coworkers at my company are Japanese. Parentheses. Well, no shit. Yeah, because you're in Japan. Except for two Polish guys who started working about a year ago. I introduced your podcast to them after they complained about how stressful it is working in an environment where everything isn't in your native language and that they feel drained at the end of the day. Needless to say, after I recommended your podcast, we would laugh our asses off at the jokes you make on the podcast, and it seems like it's helping them throughout the day. Look at these guys. Polish, so they, probably, they speak Polish, right? They go to Japan, they learn Japanese, and then they can speak English. Incredible people out there. It seems like it's helping them throughout the day i myself had moments where i would cover my face so no one could see me laughing and the first time you did the club uh the club w bush ad read i had to go under my desk as i'm f and act like i was fixing something with my pc just so i could laugh my ass off wow that was a long time ago thank you for the great podcast and god bless you and your family all right thank you thank you guys for listening um all right here's another one 911 surfer Hey, William, you mentioned on your thir Thursday, November 5th podcast that while in New York after September 11th, you heard of someone who rode the building down. Someone did do that. His name was Pasquale Bazzelli, also known as the 9-11 surfer. And they do constantly interview him, make National Geographic documentaries and books. Lots of stuff that defies logic to happen that day. Read Where Did the Tower Goes? with a skeptical mind. Anyways, best of luck with your future endeavors and go fuck yourself. So I'm supposed to get into conspiracy theory about who knocked that down, but I'm supposed to believe that someone fucking surfed a goddamn skyscraper that fucking was in an unplanned implosion. I'm not reading it. I'm not reading it. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. The problem with the fucking internet is, is everything is presented as fact. I'm not wasting my time reading that. Um, I was in New York. I was watching the news the whole fucking time. You cannot ride a fucking building down. How did he ride it down? <laughs> what do you do? You grab a piece of carpet? If you want a fucking... Maybe if you want a ranch, a one-room ranch, and the whole fucking thing pancaked. Do you want to have all the, the, the roof of a house fall on you? Why am I getting upset by this? Okay, buddy, you know what? It happened. You're, you're right. It happened happened we never went to the moon but this guy fucking okay all right from denmark dear billy blue 
Uh, thank you so much for all the great content you put up for free. I don't think you get enough credit. I get plenty of credit. Uh, thank you, though. I was wondering if you heard about the pro uh, the protests we have here in Denmark. You know what? I did hear that there was some protesting going on there. I didn't read about it. Somebody who I hang out with who's smart mentioned that there was. For nine days, the streets outside Parliament were flooded with people protesting a proposed law that would be able to define groups as being vaccinated or not vaccinated. Oh, wow, this is a gray area. People who refuse vaccination could be coerced through physical detainment by the police. This article is in English and explains in more detail, short enough to read on the podcast. Okay, let's look at it. Oh, my God. What is Denmark's proposed epidemic law? Why is it being criticized? This is not short enough to read on the podcast. All right, the new epidemic law would replace an emergency law passed in the spring, which gave the government extended powers to intervene in society in order to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, as well as enforcing quarantine measures, the existing law empowers the authorities prohibit access to public institutions, supermarkets and shops, public and private nursing homes and hospitals, and also to impose restrictions on access to public transport. Recent instances in which the emergency law has been used by the government to implement rules include the partial lockdown of North Jutland and enhanced national restrictions, including... Okay, so they're basically... Part of this thing is they're going to force you to get a, a, uh, a vaccination, which God knows what it does to you. Well, here's the thing about that. Uh, you kind of... People back them into a corner by not doing the non-vaccinated route of just wearing a fucking mask and staying six feet apart. People didn't do it. So um, I'm not saying that the government's innocent here and in what they're trying to do, but your fellow countrymen around the world have now put governments in a position to pull this off because you won't fucking do what they're telling you to do. Now evil cunts can come up with some shit. Let's give them, uh, you know, let's give them this vaccination that, Stops COVID and makes them kind of lethargic. <laughs> Anyways, he goes, I think it's important for countries to know that they can change with protest and that this is something that could make its way to their government's lawmakers. In Europe, we tend to not like being put on lists because of what happened the last time people were told they were different. Sorry about my bad English. Your English is great. Thanks for F is for family. My whole family loves the show, even my grandfather. That's awesome. Um, yeah, well, how does protest work in your country? In our country, if you protest, you get the living shit kicked out of you. Um, throughout history, if you protest, you are risking getting killed. It's just how we... It's just, it's just a violent place over here. This place was taken violently. It's it's maintained violently. It's just a violent... We. Uh, it's. I just think it's just violent over here. I just It blows my mind when I go to other countries and the cops don't have guns. Uh... You know, and you watch a, a, a guy has a knife and he's acting crazy and then they just get those plastic partition things. And they just sort of fucking bum rush the guy and they get the knife. That's, every time I watch him, I'm like, that guy would get shot a hundred times over here. Um, I don't know, just different philosophies. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anything. All right, Mexican food rant. Hey, Bill, was just listening to the latest Thursday afternoon podcast where you talked about checking out mom and pop Mexican spot for the first time. Yeah, I went there. I, I Did I talk about that? Oh, the Thursday one. Yeah, I did. I did. Okay. I'm a 25-year-old Mexican dude that fucking loves to cook and a family slash community that taught me right. So I figured I'd chime in with un my unsolicited opinion. Kind of a long one, so bear with me. No, I love listening to this type of shit. Uh, now where fucked up is trying to judge a place off their burritos. Some real gringo shit. All right. That was the wrong thing. All right. All right. So I, I shouldn't, because this is the deal. When I go to a pizza place, I just order a margarita. I order something, you know, with no toppings to judge it. And, uh, you know, I love a chicken burrito. So that's what I base it on. So evidently that's some real gringo shit. I'm getting the real talk here. I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love a burrito as much as the next guy. But in my experience, white people always reduce Mexican food to burritos. No, burritos and tacos. He said burritos exclusively. Like there isn't an entire goddamn menu at these places. You can't even get a burrito in Mexico. They'll look at you like you're a fucking idiot. Um, well, you know, 
it's a whole new fucking cuisine. You know, you, you're dipping your toe in. I don't know. I get, I get like, it's intimidating. I don't know what all that shit is. So I, I, I just stay at my safe place. I go Italian restaurants. Nine out of ten, I'm getting the chicken parm. Uh, Mexico is one of the most amazing food cultures in the world. The amount of crops we all take for granted that originated there is insane. Avocados, cocoa, corn, tomatoes, chili peppers, vanilla, to name a few. I love all of that stuff. Uh, chili peppers if they're not too hot. Uh, now I can't speak for the... When it gets so fucking hot, it just overpowers the entire thing. I feel like I'm at a party and there's 30 other people I want to talk to, but this one cunt won't shut the fuck up. I feel the same way about... Um, about what? What is that shit? Um, uh, what was that shit that they were just putting in everything? Um, oh, I know it. I know it. It's right on the tip of my tongue. What was that? F- truffle oil is the same thing. Just overpowers anything that it's in. Um, and in Japanese cuisine, those that yellow paste, that egg shit, whatever you put that in. Oh my god! It's just you know it's there. Ethel showed up. You know I hate stuff like that. I like stuff that's sort of like you know. Gets in the mix and is a good shit, you know, over by the fridge tossing your beer, right? Um, anyway, now I can't speak for the specific uh, place you went to, but I re- recommend you grab some tacos. Al Pastor. I'm going to say everything like a white guy. Next time you check it out. That's a safe bet most places. All right, good shit. Tacos are a better choice than burritos almost every time, actually. Way more flavor per square inch. I know white people think mayo is spicy, but don't be afraid to throw some extra salsa on there, too. It builds character. Um, like I said, I don't mind if it gets a little bit hot. But if it's going to get, like, obnoxiously hot, my nose is running and shit, and I have to build a tolerance up for it. I, I mean, if i got to build a tolerance up, I want to be getting a buzz. You know what I mean? Um, some of my other favorites uh, to get at taquerias are tortas. It's a type of sandwich. And soppies, soapies. All right, this, 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 all my pronunciation here is for anybody Mexican listening so they can laugh at me, which are fluffy fried discs. Oh, did you fry it? What a surprise. Fucking lunatics, you guys even fry ice cream. Like, it's not even fattening enough. Um, of corn dough topped with the usual stuff. All right, I'm going back to this place. You know what? You've inspired me. I'm going back there, and I'm going to order this stuff. I'm going to copy and paste this, put it on my desktop, and I'm going to go back, and I'm going to order some of this stuff. Um, anyways, uh, I recommend just asking them what their signature dish is. If you're a seafood fan, Mexican seafood or mariscos is, is the shit highly recommended looking into that whole world. All right. I could go on for days, but I'll leave it there. Well, you know what? Here's the deal. I'll go out and I'll try some of this stuff over the next month and, uh, then I'll check back in with you. I just want to thank you for doing this fucking thing twice a week. It always helps me with rough times. A couple weeks ago, I lost my cousin to suicide. Oh, man, that's brutal. I've lost a couple friends to that. He was my closest and oldest friend. A week after that, I lost my uncle on the same side of the family. It's been incredibly difficult, but your dumbass show (laughs) has been a companion throughout. I know you'd be the first to say you're a fucking idiot, but I appreciate your perspective on life and hard times. Uh, You seem to know what's really important. Uh, If you ever find yourself up in Northern California... Uh, I'd love to buy you a beer and share some recipes. Take it easy and go fuck yourself. All right. What a good man. I appreciate all of that. Um, I should have been asking more. All right. Japanese people. All right. When I go to your restaurants, I always get a spicy yellowtail hand roll and uh, edamame. I'm basic. You know, I find something I like and I, I stick with it and I try not to stray. You know, these are probably, you know, I bet most of the stuff I get are like Americanized Japanese sushi. So that's another reason why I got to go to Tokyo. I'm just going to cheat off other people when I'll just see what they're ordering and I'll go and get it. What I do every once in a while is I will go and I just, you know, if I'm with my wife, because she's more adventurous than I am when it comes to that shit. And if the option is there, we just have the sushi chef make what he or she wants to make. Um, I find that I'll get outside of my comfort zone. That's cool, man. That's actually, you know what? That's a good new um, segment for the podcast. Write in from different countries and tell us uh, how to order. All right? And I'll tell you how to order. You guys ask me your questions. Hey, I'm coming to America. Where should I go? What should I get? And if I can't answer the question, my other listeners can. 
All right, dumb, dumb questions on the job. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Um, ballpark. Take me out to the ball game. All right, first time, long time, big fan. All right, just want to say thanks for all you do and for letting me feel like uh, there's at least one person out there who feels who, who I feel is also riding that razor's edge of always just about to lose their shit, but at least – but the last second calms down enough to just let it go. I, I try to do that. I don't do it too well. Wanted to share five dumb questions on the job working at the ballpark here in Seattle. Number five, do we have to stay for the whole game? <laughs> that is insane. I hear this one a lot. Never understood why. This isn't Alcatraz. Just leave whenever you want. That's exactly what you should say. Uh, number four, why can't I buy my kid a beer? Happens a dozen times a year. Some dad buys two beers and lets his underage kid have one and then just lets his obvious underage kid hold it and drink it around the ballpark. When confronted, they always play the, but he's my kid card, and we got to ask them to leave. Yeah, I mean, Jesus Christ. You got to sneak your kid a beer at a game, but you got to do it, you know. You got to make the ballpark not get in trouble. Um, where's the bathroom? Seems like an innocent enough question, but when you hear it 300 times a game, it drives you nuts. You're in a stadium that's pretty much a circle. Just start walking in any direction, and you'll hit a bathroom, dumbass. Um, can I keep my fake ID? <laughs> For some reason, here in the Pacific Northwest, kids get their hands on a ton of fake IDs, and they always look pretty legit. But when they get busted, they always ask for their fake ID back because they paid for that. Uh, that's hilarious. Hey, I paid for that cocaine. Um, who's the home team? Pretty much self-explanatory and happens way too much. Thanks, Bill. Have a good one. All right, mailman. Hey, beautiful, bald Bill. Uh, my family and I love your comedy and podcast. I'm a postal carrier and I deliver in the north. I'm not going to say where in case you get in trouble here for eight years. Here are the five dumbest questions I've got. Number five, are you the new guy? It really throws people off that somebody other than their normal guy is delivering mail. It's like they don't understand a day off. Number four, who is the current resident and why do I get their mail? Uh, I get this all the time. I have to explain to people. It doesn't matter whose name is on the letter. Barack Obama, Mickey Mouse, current residence mail is for the address. I've literally had people scream at me that they don't want them. It's like they never heard of a trash bin. Number three, I just ordered from XYZ website an hour ago. When should I expect my package? I don't know, dude. I don't work for that website. <laughs> Number two, when does the FedEx office close? I don't know, dude. I don't work for them. Seems like you have to say that a lot. Number one, when did you start delivering on Saturday? As far as I know, since Ben Franklin was appointed the Postmaster General and it hasn't changed since. You got to love. You got to love when you got the great comebacks. Quick bonus story. One time I saw someone put a duct tape wrench, a duct tape wrap, sorry. All right, I'm just looking at my record. I think it's going to crap out on me here. Um, one time I saw someone put a duct tape wrapped Shaw's bag with a sweater in it. On the bag in pen, it said, return to Amazon. Being an ass asshole, I wrote on a sticky note, needs postage. Come back the next day, there's a single stamp on the same bag, like a grandmother sending birth a birthday card. Thanks, Bill. You're the best. All right. Awesome. All right. Um, I think this thing's going to crap out. I'm not going to read the last one. I'll save it for Thursday. All right. That is the podcast, everybody. Look out. Um, all right. Apocalypse. Hello, Billiam. I am a dedicated podcast listener. I'm a big fan of it. I've noticed your recent musings on preparing for the apocalypse, buying guns. I haven't done any of it. I just think about doing it. And then Nia just looks at me and just shakes her head like you're out of your fucking mind. Uh, buying guns, learning how to hunt and survive when the inevitable human population bubble bursts and we run out of food and water. Uh, while I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon, it eventually will happen. And it may very well happen within my lifetime. <clears throat> okay. Well, I guess you plan on living a long time then, sir. Um, cause you're, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon, but probably in my lifetime. Wouldn't you think, you know, in the overall history of how long m man has walked the planet and woman, that that's kind of soon? We've been around. How long have we been around? 100,000 years? I don't fucking know. We've been, we haven't been around that long, have we? Jesus was on, walking the earth 2,000 years ago. He didn't have an iPad. Look what the fuck he did. They went to kill him. Did they Did they use a lethal injection or electric chair? They tied him to a fucking stake. If you believe in that stuff. You know, I'm not trying to offend anybody. Some people don't believe it even happened. Some people don't even believe that the guy even existed. Some people think it was just all made up. 
Uh, I'm not trying to offend anybody, you know? <laughs> Anyways, like you, I grew up in a big city with, with middle-class parents, relatively sheltered, and didn't learn a lot of the basic survival skills as a kid. As an adult with children, I think it's vital, capitals, vital, that they learn basic fundamental skills of survival, building a fire, making shelter, hunting, etc. I picked up hunting as an adult, and I have to say it has changed my understanding of the, of the natural world, man's role as a predator on the planet, how we evolve, where we fit in, etc. Um, I cannot underscore the appreciation you will have if you actually get out there, harvest your own food. You have to use the word harvest when you're killing a living thing. That's really creepy to me. Just say fucking blow the brains out of a fucking elk. Um, prepare it and, <clears throat> and then feed yourself and your loved ones. It's an experience someone who sees the world as you do will surely appreciate. Yeah, I think that's awesome. But what am I going to do? Am I going to go shoot a fucking deer and then tie it to the front of my Prius and drive back down to L.A.? Do you understand what will happen to me? How fucking liberal it is out here? I'll get fucking stabbed to death with horseshoes on Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> Um, if you want to get really back to basics, you should learn to hunt without a gun. I actually think that's cool. Hunting without a gun is great. He said bullets make life easy. I, I, I keep the bullets for, uh, for people. Um, he said bullets make life easy, but when the shit really hits the fan, you're going to need to save those bullets in all likelihood to protect yourself from, yeah, from other people. I actually already read that, so maybe his ID was already in my head. Uh, don't kid yourself. The most dangerous animal on the planet is a hungry human who wants what you have. Forget about lions, bears, etc., they don't compare. Yeah, that's goddamn right. I don't live next to a lion, but I live next to a bunch of human beings. Um, learn to hunt with a bow and arrow. The arrows are recoverable and reusable. If you want to get really fancy, have someone take you out to hunt with dogs or birds of prey or both. <clears throat> Dude, I got to tell you, birds of prey freak me out. They really freak me out. They just, uh, they don't look, um, they're not domesticated. I don't like how you got to put like that fucking... Uh, special needs helmet over their fucking heads uh, or else they'll, I don't know what they'll do. And I don't like those talons. It's like they got a butterfly knife attached to both foot. They're like Freddy Krueger. And just one day, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, they confuse my face with some sort of red chested Robin or something. I don't know. Claw out my eyes. Um, and they always look angry. Like owls always look pissed off. You know, it's got that Dan Deardorff line right above his nose, his beak. I mean, um, by the way, just in case you think I'm a fringe wacko, a wackadoo, I'm a board certified physician and my wife went to both medical school and law school. Well, that really didn't prove anything, sir. You just said that. By the way, if you think, and if you think I'm crazy, uh, I also flew the space shuttle, sir. Um, well, tell me, how, how do I do it? How, where do I learn how to hunt? I want to, you know what I want to kill? I want to kill a varmint. I could kill a varmint. Um, could I, though? I'd have to be really hungry. I know I could do it. Anybody could do it. You just have to be hungry enough. Unless you knew about berries. You know? Oh, wouldn't that be the worst? If you're fucking out in the wilderness, right, and you don't know how to survive or hunt, but you're with somebody out there who knows how to survive and is like a fucking vegan, and you're just sitting there eating nuts and berries and shit, right? Sticking your face in a beehive, trying to lick up some honey, getting stung in the face like a goddamn brown bear. Instead of just killing a rabbit. And you guys got to deal with this guy. You know what would happen eventually? Eventually, you just, you just, you pick up a branch, pretend it was like a walking stick, and you just, you'd club him over the head. Just in a moment of frustration, and then have that panic of being alone in the wilderness, not knowing how to get out. Did I just pitch a short film? Um, <coughs> uh, you know, I smoked a cigar last night, and I got like a third of the way through it, and I was like, I'm done with this fucking habit. Now I got a stupid fucking... What do you call those things? Humidor? Anybody want a fucking humidor? You just want one? You want to just take this fucking disgusting habit out of my life? I don't want to do it anymore. You know? It's fucking horrific. It's a horrific fucking habit. You know how I know it is? Because there's not a bad smell to a dog. A dog will walk up to another a dog's fresh pile of shit and stick his nose right in it and can have it there. It doesn't gag or anything. All right? If I'm sitting there with my cigar, it won't come anywhere near me. Now, what does that tell you? Cigars smell worse than poodle shit. Okay? All right. The truth behind Pink. Uh, Bill, you should check out the, the out a documentary titled Pink Ribbons, Inc. It discusses the culture and popularity of Breast Cancer Awareness Month while exposing some of the hypocrisy involved. 
In case you don't watch it, let me give you a couple of highlights so you can talk about the film without actually having seen it. Well, thank you, sir. You got right down to the core of who I am. Give me the cliff notes. What do we got here? What do we got here? Um, the woman that invented the pink rhythm as a method to raise awareness. Quickly, one of the most annoying phrases out there. Raising awareness. Could it be any more fucking vague? They achieve it. I'm aware. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I got it. Everyone in the NFL is wearing pink. I am aware. Job done. Now nobody can fuck with all the money that you took in? Is that the loophole? That's what I'm trying to guess. Then you go out and you, and you, you buy a, a, a pink Bentley, but they can't get you because it's pink, right? I'm raising awareness, okay? And I spent this amount of money on this car to show how serious the problem is. Um, raise awareness for breast cancer it, uh, was approached by self Sorry, the woman that invented the, uh, the, the, the shit was uh, approached by the magazine Self, a magazine aimed at the ladies. And Esther, Esther, Esther Lauder, Esther Lauder, Esther, how do you say that? Esther, Esther Lauder. That's one of those things I've heard people say a zillion times. I just, I don't know. Uh, in the early 90s, uh, to partner with these corporations, knowing that these greedy cunts were only interested in the pink rhythm as a way to increase their bottom line, the creator of the original pink rhythm refused to collaborate and told Self and Esther Lauder, SD Lauder, uh, to go fuck themselves. So these corporate fucks created a pink rhythm that was technically a different color, and the pink saturation began. Another interesting point the film makes is that companies like, why did you have to pick Estee Lauder? I just said it right, Estee Lauder, there it is. Promote breast cancer awareness by turning pink the labels of products that contain carcinogens. Isn't that fucking hilarious? Uh, of the money that buying all this pink shit raises, apparently only 15% of it is used for researching prevention of breast cancer. Most of the research goes to figuring out which cancer drugs work best for treating the disease once it occurs. Yeah, and nothing preventative because the money is not in the cure, it's in the treatment. Anyway, check out the movie, Pink Ribbon Inc. It's available on Netflix Instant. Thanks for the podcast and all the free funny. Well, you're welcome, sir. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm at that, read that book that I'm reading. Uh, I mean, take it for whatever you want. I mean, obviously, I'm not a nutritionist, but the uh, that Eat to Live book, where it talks about vegetables and that type of thing and, uh, and fruits and all the uh, antioxidants and how it, it, I don't know, helps regenerate some damaged cells from all the shit that you do. Yeah, I, I really believe it just once a day, if you just have a giant fucking salad and you eat a couple of pieces of fruit, you can offset all that other stuff. Because I got to tell you, there's no way I'm ever going to 100% uh, just never have a steak again. You know what I mean? Sorry. There's just some steer out there that's going to have to fucking die. By the way, why do they have that in the commercial? Why do they have a, a cow saying, eat more chicken? They don't feed you cows. It's steers. And a steer is basically a bull with its balls lopped off, as far as I can tell. That's what I was told back in the day when I would do college gigs. And uh, I would see bull. I'd randomly see a bull, and I would see a bunch of cows, and then I would see steer. And I'd be like, all right, a bull's a male. A cow's a female. What the fuck is a steer? And they said it was a bull with the balls lopped off. So I, what are they, like eunuchs? They don't hit puberty? I don't fucking know. Anyways, um, next question here on the podcast. Uh, gyno. Gyno. Hey, Bill, what, what's your opinion on this? My wife recently had a, a gyno appointment. I hate that. Just gynecologist. Gyno makes it sound like it's all goopy and gross. <laughs> that's disgusting, but that's what I think. A gynecological appointment. As a thoughtful husband, I remembered. So later in the day, I casually asked my wife, hey, how'd the appointment go? She said, the doctor said, everything looks great. I was incredulous. I don't know what that means, but I think it means you're upset. He said, I said, what? What did he say? She said, he said, everything looks great. I said, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Really? Really? What, what, what were his, his, his exact words? She said, those were his exact words. Everything looks great. Then he writes, motherfucker, are you kidding me? Bill, does that comment seem completely unprofessional to you? I mean, he's a freaking doctor. He should have said something like, everything looks in order or everything looks healthy. These goddamn doctors. Remember that Dr. Mancini from Melrose Place? He was a real SOB. They're all like that, especially these creepy gynos. What kind of guy becomes a gyno? Stop saying that word, sir. What the fuck is this? What the fuck just popped up on my goddamn computer in the middle of a critical moment? Get the fuck out of here. Um, anyways, get back. Plus, my wife is very attractive, and now he's telling her that her pussy looks great. <laughs> 
The guy says, hey, I know her pussy looks great. That's part of why I married her. What really fucking frost me, though, is that I had to pay this guy 50, a $50 copay for his observation. It's like he's laughing at me. Anyway, what do you think about all that? I wouldn't mind Nia's opinion as well. Uh, should I get involved here? Thanks. Don't mention my name. All right. All right. Um, you know what? You, you, what you should do is just do what you just did to me. Because what you're saying is funny. You just say it to your wife in a funny way. And just be, and just be like, what, who, what does this guy look like? Does he look like this Dr. Mancini from Melrose Place? I don't know what he looks like, but that guy sounds like a, a fucking sleaze bag. You know? Why does he get to just look at you? You know, I had to buy you a ring. I had to wine and dine you. I had to do all this type of stuff. I actually love you, and I only see it a couple of times a month. You get on there for no just something. There's got to be something funny there because there is something actually, uh, um, I don't know, women might not agree with this, but there's something caring about this. You know? I see how much, you know, you're into your wife. You know, like some other guy just looking at it without saying something, uh, well, you know. Ah, oh, shit, my fucking phone. Who is this? Who is this? And what do you want? I'm in the middle of talking about gyno. Um, yeah, I think, you know, if your wife's a hot shit, she'll, she'll get a kick out of it. Like, that's the kind of thing that would make, uh, that would make me a laugh if I ever said something like that. Oh, yeah? How long was he checking you out? Did he have you lay on your belly? <laughs> yeah, I got to check the other side of the, uh, the, uh, your vagina, just, uh, on your belly, just lay on your belly and sort of, uh, just point your, your, your buttocks. They'd use like those, those words. So it didn't sound perverted, you know, at the ceiling. Um, oh, speaking of perverted, oh, I can't even get into this. Let's just say earlier in the podcast, I mentioned that I went to something and saw some people that I hadn't seen in a long time. And, uh, Let's just say uh, some older creep from the faculty showed up for whatever fucking reason. You know? There's always one. There's always one. Um, creepy. Okay, overrated, underrated. Um, underrated. Uh, going to your high school reunion. And uh, overrated. Getting fucking blitzed. At your high school, if you, I think if you're like if you're five year, you're ten year, you can go in there and get a little bit fucked. You definitely get drunk at your your five year, but twenty five year, you know, get a nice little buzz going. Plus, uh, you know, I don't know if you like the kids you went to school with, you want to be able to remember what the fuck you said, you know. Anyways, underrated having a tight ass for a boss. As much as everyone wishes that their boss wasn't such an asshole, it's about twenty times worse to have a cool boss that cuts corner, cuts corners and doesn't do their part. Yeah, and then the company goes under, and then you're looking for work. Um, overrated. Bill, whenever you see a list of the greatest movies ever made, you will always see Gone with the Wind on that list, right? My family and I decided to watch it for the first time on Thanksgiving. It was fucking horrible. It's basically a three-hour movie about a self-centered cunt. <laughs> Throughout the movie, you watch this bitch gold dig her way through without any remorse for anyone else. Besides the protagonist being unlikely, unlikable, the plot is fucking stupid. I, it really has no point. When the movie ended, I yelled, that's it? That's the big fucking ending? Avoid at all costs. None of us liked it. Uh, I, gotta, I, I have to watch it now. Is that the one where he ends? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. That was basically the 1940s version of saying, yeah, why don't you go fuck yourself, you cunt? All right, you're going to be old and your tits are going to fall. And then where are you going to be? Huh? Your hair teased up on all those goddamn noodles sitting here on the fucking plantation. What are you going to do then? Not even the non-hired help will listen to you. So go fuck yourself. All right, there's soon to be flabby tits. Okay? If you're not coming with love, all you got is your looks. Okay? There's no Botox at this point in, in, in history. You're finished. All right? So why don't you get over here and suck this dick while you still can? And then and they roll the fucking credits. All right. Neolog preview here, everybody. Um... This was sent to me. Hey, Bill, love the podcast. Back cataloging it like crazy. Thank you. Here's my fucking problem. I got a roommate who was wonderful. We're buddies. We watch stupid sh You know what? Fuck this. I, I got to make this. I got to make this larger. This print is too small. Here we go. I've actually learned how to do this. Select everything. Uh, go up here. Go from 12. Let's make it fucking 18 like a grandmother. There we go. All right. I got a roommate who's wonderful. We're buddies. We watch stupid shit and laugh together about it. All right. Uh, he's got this girlfriend who's 
a drain on everything that is fun in the world. I'm not talking about the regular guy-girl argument crap. I mean everything. Quick example. We were watching that BBC Planet Earth series, and we were just joking at the most beautiful shit in the world, literally, and all she could do is bitch about how ugly the birds were, complain about David Attenborough's voice, or get mad at some animal just because it's killing another animal to fucking survive. After we finished, she said she would love to be on the crew of a nature documentary shoot. She's got no soul. The guy loves her. They've been together for over a year, but it's so clear he can't stand to be around her. They only ever argue. Oh, they only argue, and not in that great way that you and Nia did in one of the podcasts where you all laughed with each other. It's unbearable, and she's at my apartment five days a week. Yeah, dude, you know something? I get it. You're in a relationship, but either move in with this bitch or let's have a fucking two days here, two days there. You know, you got eight home games a year. You got eight away games in the NFL. Let's try to set it up the same fucking way. So if this is like baseball. At some point, you got to have a fucking road trip. Okay, there's sport. Um, anyways, most nights I eventually either drink or smoke or just so I'm not in the same world as her. And I like smoking. Who am I kidding? Uh, I want to talk to him about it, but he's a really private guy. We've never talked about his relationship stuff. He tends to, he tends to steer away from it. It's becoming pretty obvious that I can't stand this girl, nor can any of our friends. I'm afraid that she's going to drive us apart, then feast on his soul so she can try and find some kind of personality for herself. How do you think I should approach this with this guy? I got a right to complain to him about this girl, right? Got to do it tenderly or something. Um, All right, this is the deal. I almost started singing when a man loves a woman, but I'm not going to do that to you. But it's true, okay? When a man loves a woman... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> There's no other way to get into this point. I can't believe I was able to say that without singing it. Uh, even even I, as, as bad as I sing, no, I can't even. You want me to do it? All right. When a man does a woman. Um, there's no fucking way you can approach um, the cunty things that annoy you about them. What you have to do is just walk into another room and just like, Literally, just grab a pillow off of the couch, you know, after she says something. You just walk in the other room, you just go, What the fuck? And then you just come back in, and you go, Oh, so what are you majoring in, right? You just do that. But you do have a right as a roommate to have some sort of parameters, all right? The problem is, is you've let it get out of control, all right? So here's the deal. Either this dude's going to marry this girl, or he isn't. Okay, he's going to marry this girl. Your guys, your friendship is fucking over. You're not going to hang out with him because he's he's with this colossal cunt. You're going to meet somebody else. Then eventually you're going to get married. You're going to have kids. You're barely going to have time to see this person anyways, even if you liked his wife. Okay, but the fact that she's a cunt, she's just going to fade out anyways. Okay, so there's nothing to worry about there. Losing this friendship. If he's going to marry this girl, it's fucking over, dude. Okay, it's a done deal. All right. Um. And if he's eventually going to break up with her, whatever you're going to say to him now, he's eventually going to come around and he's going to be saying all the shit that you're going to say to him or want to say to him. So you don't need to say it. You just get you all. What you really have to deal with right now is just trying to cut down the amount of time that that fucking that 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 hell cunt comes into your apartment five days a week, dude. I don't care if you even like to just say, listen, um, I respect you and your relationship. You know, I'm really happy for you. You seem really happy. But, you know, it's just, uh, gee, oh, this is fucking hard. She's coming over here five days a week. Can Is there any way you can you can kind of cut that in half a couple nights over her place? Because I like to come out here. I like to smoke a fucking bong, and I like to watch the fucking TV. Well, you can do that. You can do that when she's here. Oh, boy. Yeah, but see, I, I like to do it in a, 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 a cunt-free atmosphere. Oh, there's no fucking way to do this. Um. You know what? You're just basically going to have to ask yourself what's more important to you. Your friendship with this guy or your your fucking, uh, you know, your ability to fucking have a beer and smoke a joint without this bitch fucking ruining, your, your, you know, five nights of your week. Okay? I would suggest this, okay? If you still want to be friends with this guy, you don't want to rock the boat, then I would look for another place to live if you could, which is fucking sucks. you got to pay to move. But I'm telling you, you're going to be psyched. How old are you, dude? Maybe it's time you should fucking live alone, you know, because you might jump out of this, out of the fire, and, and, and out of the fire into the what? And out of the frying pan into the fire? Dude, this is fucking rough. 
I don't know how to just say it. Say, Listen, dude, I don't know how to say this to you because I feel like however I say it, you're going to feel like I'm attacking you and that, you know, you're going to say something to your girlfriend and she's going to think that I don't like her, which I don't. Um, just say, listen, she's coming over here five days a week. She's not paying rent. You know, I like hanging out, watching TV. You know, I'm coming over here. She's taking up half the couch. I just need just can we cut it down to four days a week, three days a week? I don't mind her coming over here. Just not five out of the seven days. All right. I want to come out here in my underwear, rub my balls, drink a fucking beer, and watch the game. I don't want to come out here, you know, dressed like uh, I'm a, on Father's Knows Best. You know, you know, back in the day, the fathers would walk around the house in a goddamn suit, right? You know what, dude? Sometimes you just got to burn a friendship. There's all different ways you can do that. You could just, you could just be honest and just say, listen, dude, if, 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 <laughs> if this fucking girl comes over here one more time, so do you like want me to cut it down to like three days a week? No, how about zero? How about you break up with her and realize you can get somebody better? How about that? You know? I don't know, sir. That that is definitely a rough one. I I, I gave you a number of options. Um I would in no way say how you feel about that girl to your buddy. You can't do that. Um I mean you can't, but there's just gonna be ramifications to that. But uh I would definitely try to get that, you know, try to get that number knocked down. All right, did I just say the same thing for fucking 20 minutes over and over again? All right, there's an hour. There's an hour for you. All right, that's the Monday Morning Podcast for this week. Uh, I'm going to be at the Brea.